name is Larry Swells, and I was a uh, senior in high school in 1966 when the F5 tornado uh, hit the Candlestick Park. And uh, I was working there at the grocery store, and uh, uh, it was just a frightening ordeal that happened uh, that you don't ever think is going to happen to anybody. You see it on TV, you see these things happening out in the, you know, Oklahoma and different other states and all that, but you never dream that it's going to happen in your own backyard. It was just a normal school day. I had gone uh, uh, into work and uh, uh, worked there at the Liberty Grocery Store. And uh, as I bagged one bag of groceries, I was taking them out to the car to my, actually my neighbor. And uh, and my neighbor was, uh, and they told me, he said, well, my children are in the store. Would you mind telling Carol and her sister to, you know, she's ready to go and come on out and all that. So as I made the turn to come out of the parking lot, uh, this young man came running down the sidewalk screaming there's a tornado coming and uh, of course you were all like really uh, unbelievable you know we just we were 16 years old and we just didn't think about things of that nature so he was very serious about it so the, the grocery store that I worked in was the last building on the end of the shopping center so um, out of my curiosity I, I left there and went to the end of the building and looked around the building and sure enough there was a tornado there was a huge tornado accompanied by one or two little smaller ones seemed like behind it and all that. So I immediately ran back inside and I started screaming to everybody to get down the tornado is in, going to hit the building and we all everybody needs to take cover and all and so we started helping people try to find something to get under or hide or whatever, or find some safety and all that. And uh, my another guy was uh, that day was working with me, uh, Mr. Clark. He uh, Tornado actually at that time when we were have, trying to help everybody hit the back of the building and they pulled a vacuum on the building and everything. And I turned around to Ronnie, he was holding on to the door. And the next thing I know, the door slammed. And uh, the big plate glass windows that were in the front of the grocery stores uh, came out of this uh, uh, seal or whatever and it hit me in the back and knocked me all the way to the back of the store. And just went down, flying down the aisle and hit the back counter in the very back and I turned around and I crawled back on my hands and knees through all the debris and everything and all the things that had gone off the shelf inside the store uh, and I crawled back up under and I knew the only thing I could think of was tied down would be the checkout counter so I kind of scooted up under it and knelt down. Uh, the whole time I'm thinking this can't really be happening of course and, all, and I looked outside into the parking lot and all the cars in the parking lot were just in a big whirlwind just like you would see paper in a whirlwind or trash whirling around out in the parking lot and uh, it happened so quick and and it really didn't last that long but if you're sitting in it it seems like it's forever and all that but as soon as it uh, it was over uh, it was just quiet it was so quiet and you could uh, hear people start hollering for help and monitoring you know just things happening and everything from there on just was kind of a blur I mean you just started helping people and taking care of people two little girls that the neighbor had asked me to bring up there. she came come running up to me and uh, she had had her uh, thumb was severed and, and was hanging on and I took my apron off and I had and I wrapped it up everything and I rushed her outside for a mile. Her mom was okay, believe it or not. She rode through the storm in the car. In the car? Her, in the car. And I rushed her outside of there. And then there were several people in our church, in our, in our area that got hurt and, and all that. So we escorted everybody we could that we knew needed medical attention out to the, to the road and the guy had uh, backed up in his uh, camper truck and I never forget we were putting people in the back of the camper truck and everything and he was loading them up to get them out of there to get them to the hospital uh, and then you know time goes by and, and we're helping a lot of people because uh, everything there is flattened uh, everything between the one of the outside stores on each end were totally flattened in the middle and even the little uh, what we call the dog and suds a little restaurant in the restaurant parking lot across them, so it's gone. Uh, everything was just piled up in rubbles that just uh, in top of it and just it was devastating and all. And uh, so we started helping people and uh, people were coming from everywhere to help and we worked there for I don't know how long and I, didn't, I finally wound up going to the hospital and I had some cuts in the back of my head and my back and other places but uh, they just didn't really bother me at the time because our, our adrenaline was so much that 
and we were just trying to help people and get them out of the rubble. And we don't know who was in the, we don't know who was under what or whatever, but we worked uh, really hard and fast to try to help everybody we could. Um, and um, it was just a really scary, devastating moment. Uh, and, you know, tornadoes uh, hit that building was obviously one of the, I think, I, I think it was known at that time as the sixth largest tornado ever hit, to, ever hit Mississippi. Uh, it was the L5. And, uh, but it was just, it was just, you know, we had in that path of that particular tornado, I do remember. 57 people that lost their lives and uh, in the path of that particular tornado and it went for miles, many, many, many miles uh, and all. But uh, it's a day that I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Of course, everybody panics because you just don't know what to do. I mean, you know, we're talking about 1966. I don't remember as a kid being uh, here paying much attention to, you know, uh, any uh, signals that were put out or any notices were put out for tornadoes. And, I don't even believe there were sirens back then. It might have been. I don't remember. But, but uh, anyway, uh, it, it happened. It happened so quick uh, that it's just it was an uh, unbelievable amount of damage that can that, you know that came from the tornado. Uh, and yeah, remember I was just 16 years old and just a kid that you know uh, uh, as, as 16 year olds all of us I think we've been we don't live forever. We're invincible, but I did. Fear from my life back then. I realized it was tearing the roof out of the building and, and everything else, and not a thing in the parking lot was up in the air. I knew then that this is a very, very powerful uh, storm we're going to come in, and and uh, you know we all could, we all could have died very easily. From that point on, did you have you changed how you see when you hear that it's bad weather or I didn't. there's storms coming and things? What I didn't. do you do? I, didn't. I actually. More storm ready now today than we were back then, uh, but I actually do pay attention to, to tornado warnings and and uh, and all. And so, uh, in preparation for that, I've also shared with my family and other people and all that. Especially when I was uh, uh, in my years that I served with the county, to you know to tell people uh, the the significance of having sirens and having weather statements put out and having weather radios in your home, things of that nature, mm. because it can happen to anybody, anytime, anywhere. And I think you just have to be aware of it. You have to be uh, uh, attentive to, you know, when you hear alerts on the radio or for the TV or wherever it may be, uh, you've got to uh, prepare for it because you don't ever know. A tornado can change directions uh, in just a matter of minutes, and, uh, and, and nobody's immune to them. I don't think anybody is. I think what, what the tornado did for me respect uh, life, uh, you know, and uh, respect others and try to uh, help others. I think the tornado gave me an opportunity, you know, to seek to help other people. And uh, and obviously God had a plan for me uh, in the future. And what I do today is uh, I help a lot of people in a lot of different ways and everything. But uh, I think the tornado prepares you uh, and maybe helps you grow up a lot because you do realize that uh, the tornado could have very easily taken your life, and as it did, take a whole lot of other people's lives, and just that quick, you know. Um, but as my tenure when I served as the uh, board of supervisors, uh, I think it was uh, maybe my words and maybe a lot of the uh, other the help that we had from the board of supervisors, all my all my, uh, my uh, colleagues on there too. I think that we became more aware. Just based on what I knew, but based on what we, you know, we experienced some tornadoes during my time, and it was very devastating there in Brandon and Rankin County as well. And I think it led us to be more aware of those things and try to get the word out, try to figure out the best way to get that information out to people and how to prepare for it. And if they do get in the situation, you know, what to do uh, in preparing for the in safety for their own safety. And I know there's a, a shelter or something. Right, the, the county invested uh, into a, what we have. We have a storm shelter uh, there in the city of Brandon. Uh, my family knows that when uh, to take any warning uh, seriously, uh, they know to what to do uh, during a tornado. I mean, as far as finding the uh, center of the house and finding some, some areas that you can uh, get into the, for your protection and all. And then, of course, we as a county, we encourage.
encouraged a lot of people to actually put in these safe rooms in their houses as they build them, uh, and, you know, nowadays and uh, everything too. So uh, we try to make sure that everybody understands that tornado has a, uh, its paths or just it can go anywhere. I mean, they not they're not just certain ways that they go where tornado forms. A tornado skip around anywhere and go anywhere, as we've noticed here in the state of Mississippi. Uh, devastated by a lot of tornadoes, you know, that's hit the state of Mississippi and, and all. And like I say, no, uh, everybody should be aware and should be cautious because uh, a tornado can happen anywhere, anytime. The technology we have today is so much better than what we had back in the 60s, of course, and I think it just uh, it gets better and better and better. Uh, the, the, the information that we get ahead of time when things are happening, uh, uh, storm-wise, and just it's just tremendous and the, the alerts that we get prior to and all that kind of stuff is definitely saving lives today and i think the most important thing is to believe that it can happen to you and i think that uh, people should uh, be more aware of what to do uh, when there are warnings given uh, be more aware of you know the things that they need to prepare for as far as getting into safety uh, what areas in the house they need to go to to safety uh, and all that but i, I want people to understand one thing it can happen to anybody, anytime. If it's a tornado on the ground, that you're not, you're not, in, in, you're, you're, you're always in harm's way because the tornado will change paths in uh, just a matter of minutes. So I would tell everybody, please pay attention uh, to the news broadcast and whatever they may be getting by way of a siren or radio or TV. Uh, take it serious. Pay attention and be alert and be prepared to, uh, to uh, take cover.